All right, so I'm going to teach about wise women, wise women. So women, there's a way that you can become smart, and it's not by how the world dictates to you. So I want you to turn to Genesis 3 as well. Genesis chapter 3. You want to look at what God views as a wise woman, Amen. as a wise woman, and not the world's view of what a wise woman should be. So in this world, what they're trying to do is that they're trying to equalize everybody, man and woman, etc. But God does not do that. What God put the position of a man is to take initiative and leadership, whereas the woman God put her as a role of support and submission. And a lot of people don't like that. But again, you got to realize this. When God gives you a calling of what to do, whether to be a servant or to be a leader, you got to realize this. He doesn't call everybody to be a servant or a leader. He ordains and calls people for a good reason, and it's for your benefit. It's a gift God has given to you. But a lot of people don't take it that way. So it's all about women, female empowerment. Uh, they... Uh, they crash on the males, male chauvinists, etc. But you got to realize, let's look at what God sees as empowerment, what God sees as being wisdom. And women can become very, very wise and smart. We're not, we Bible believers don't teach women are dummies. That they're dummies and they're like, oh, whatever you say, honey, you know. No, women are not like that. Women, they are actually very intelligent, excuse my language, but they are very intelligent creatures it, with the phrase, using the phrase in a biblical standpoint. Okay, men are creatures too. All of us are creatures. By the way, liberals even think that we all came from creatures anyway, right? So who cares? But the point is, is that women, they're very intelligent humans, Amen. intelligent creatures, and the Lord gifted you that, but you're not using it. You're only using the wisdom of the world to empower you, to give you wisdom. But let me tell you, when, you, when you're borrowing from Satan's system to become smart, intelligent, powerful, you're borrowing from the wrong power. You want to borrow from, you want to get it from God's power. Now, you know what women are doing? I'll show you what women are doing to get uh, the wisdom. Look at Genesis chapter 3. What does Satan offer Eve, huh? What does Satan offer Eve? And that is Satan in public schools today. That is Satan in women's rights movement today. That is Satan in the, all political parties today, whether it be Democrat or liberal. That is Satan in Hollywood today. Look at Genesis chapter 3, and we will read verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof. That's what majority of women are doing today. Now, you don't want that, amen? You don't want that. If there's an area that you don't want to go, this is the area that you don't want to go. And that's back in the Garden of Eden, where Satan tempted Eve to partake in the forbidden fruit. And in the forbidden fruit, he says, this is where wisdom is found. Don't let Satan deceive you, amen? But that's where everyone's grabbing. Yeah. Why? Because it appeals them. It appeals them when you have a job of power, yeah. a diploma of power, uh, a reputation of power, a movie that talks about female empowerment, a political office that shows off empowerment. If you women think that power and prestige is found at fame, position, and money, etc., you got to realize this. Men shouldn't even... Bible-believing men don't even seek for that, too, to find true power. Amen. That's all f worldly. That's fleshly. That's of the devil's world, yeah. devil's kingdom. Okay, so where do we find wisdom? Go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. All right, let's talk about wisdom, women. You want to become smart, right? All right. I know some of you are already smarter than me, all right? Don't get angry at me, okay? Okay, I'm not saying you're dummy, all right? But let's... Uh, let's Get that stuff out of you where you haven't been using it for the, for the glory of God before. Let's, let's enact them. Let's enact the inner power in you where the Lord can give you wisdom. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, we will read verse 14. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children. Now look at this. Guide the house. 
Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully, for some are already turned aside after Satan. See, Bible believers don't teach that women cannot teach at all. Did you read verse 14? They do have something that they can teach and guide. It's what? The house. They guide the house. So that's why uh, when we have female Sunday school teachers, there's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with women teaching Sunday school classes. Now you might say, why is that? Because the Bible shows over here that women can teach children. Now, do you know how many children there are messed up by the next generations and in public schools? And you don't think there's a huge demand for women to teach children? Especially when we can have a school for children rather than public schools? See, you're in huge demand, trust me, all right? There's a lot you can do. Oh, there's nothing I can do if you take away. This one is more than enough. We want the next generation come out right. But they're not coming out right. They're becoming worse. Why? Because women aren't taking their roles to do the children. They think the power is what? Their job. Full-time job, making money. My children, let the public school handle them. Look at this. If you want to be wise, it's also where give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Some are already turned aside after Satan. Another thing you got to realize, women, is that it's also where your testimony, testimony is clean. If there is a testimony in you that has blemish, okay, if it has blemish, then you got to realize this, then that's where Satan can take advantage of you. Some already turned aside after Satan. You know, uh, women, you can either have the best testimony or you can also have the worst testimony. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful of your testimony. You got to realize sometimes, I mean, this is even taught within uh, college level classes and even in public schools that sometimes women can be a lot meaner and scarier than men concerning about bullying. Believe it or not, that's what psychologists teach. I know that's hard to believe, but that's what psych even psychologists teach that. I mean, I was in a grad school psychology class, and all the girls, the majority were women too, by the way, and they all said, yes, yes, they were all doing that. They're all doing that. They're like, they can be mean, you know. Like, so, so the thing is, is that that's why you women, you can be totally demon-possessed. I mean, that's what the verse shows over here. Turn aside after Satan, or you can be used of God. Amen. So if you want to be wise, where's your testimony, huh? So you got you to look at your attendance in church. You got to look at how people look up to you, what they talk about you, how your dressing is like, your testimony in the household, how you listen to your husband. They're watching you. Everybody's watching you. See that? How you support the pastor and the ministry. Okay, uh, let's also look at Titus. Titus. We're going to look at the book of Titus, chapter 2. Chapter 2. Women can also teach women. Women can also teach women. Oh, you know, uh, women cannot teach other women. We, we don't teach that way. Oh, there might be some pastors who might do that, but me, I differ on that one. Women can teach other women, and actually it's very, very necessary. You know why? Because women can relate better to other women rather than males. Sometimes a woman knows the experience and the emotion and the exact feeling that other women are going through that men cannot really minister to. All right, look at Titus chapter 2. Verse 3, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers. So you see testimony clean again, right? That is all over for women. Notice the last part of verse 3, teachers of what? Good things. Why? Verse 4, it's other women, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Look at that. Women are necessary to teach other women. I don't understand where women are seeking worldly position, worldly roles, where they can be a leader and a teacher. Why is it the world's jobs and offers? Why can't it be God's job and offer that he gives to you women? 
You're in high demand. You just don't want the job and the demand God gives to you. You just like the job and the demand that this guy gives to you. You want this guy's job. And that's why he made it very enticing for you women. Eat the fruit. You don't want this being's offer of power, fame. Because, uh, you know why? It's going to turn to dust at the end. Yeah. It contributes nothing for eternity. Yeah. Okay, let's look at 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. P uh, uh, some people think that there's power when you teach and say something and when people listen to you. No, actually... You got to realize there is more learning, there is more knowledge. More wisdom is grown not by shooting off your mouth. More wisdom is more found by shutting your mouth. So if you want to be wise, women, it's not more of this. It's more of this. Why do you say that? Because even God says that concerning anybody, male or female, at the book of Proverbs. He that shutteth his lips is wise. A fool is known by the multitude of words he speaks. Okay, now look at 1 Corinthians 14. Look at verse 34. Let your women keep what? Silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Well, I don't like that. I'm not going to become smarter that way. S not smarter. Look at verse 35. And if they will what? Learn. learn. If they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now, look at this. So it's not about women, hey, y'all listen to me with a bunch of uh, grown male over there. That's not how God ordained the church. That's why we don't have women preachers. You notice that when there are grown males involved over here. It is what? The women, they only can have that role when it's children and with other women. That's it. But with the whole church, women cannot do that. But then I'm going to be dumb and stupid. What do you mean dumb and stupid? You learn through this. You learn through silence. You know why? Because you're not talking. You're listening. Yeah. You're writing notes. And I've learned that as a pastor that what helped me a lot to grow in wisdom was actually more of listening rather than talking. When I hang around with, especially with preachers, it's very tempting. This is for young males too, zealous for the Lord. Listen up now. It is very tempting to shoot off your mouth. OK, because you're just immersed by fellowship and excitement. But when you do that, OK, you got to realize that sometimes you're going to miss out a lot of gold mine that the older preacher or the man of God is telling to you and you're not listening. Yeah. I've done a lot more listening than talking this time. I've asked a lot more questions than telling this time. I've learned to do that. So women are to do that. Women are to do that. Now, notice right over here. They get a bonus, not just from church, obviously, but also what? The husband. So they get a bonus of not just learning from the church, but learning also from the husband. It is the husband's job to be able to teach the wife. Now, I'm not going to pound on men here. This is not your sermon time. But you men have a task and a responsibility to lead the house. If your woman's messing up, that fault is on you because you're not leading teaching the woman rightly. Why do you think that me as a pastor, I was very selective with the woman that I would be involved with? Amen. See, it comes down to where you are able to lead and guide the woman right. That fault is on you men. Amen. I know that everyone has a free choice in it. You're, even if your wife is the devil, I get it, you know, that's hard to control even if your wife is the devil. Now, women, your husband can be the devil too. So that's even more sad of a state for you. So I feel bad for you. But the thing is, the point is for you men that I'm preaching against you is that that's why you have to learn about consequences of your action. See, selecting a spouse is important. Making sure you prepare for marriage and everything is important. Everyone goes by the lust of the flesh. Let's do it. That's the problem. That's why there's fornication, too. Let's just do it, man. That's the problem with people. Okay, uh, let's turn to 2 Samuel 20. 2 Samuel 20. Now, I know what some of you women are thinking, like, okay, so I learned from my husband, but what if my husband's the devil? One, I feel sorry for you, okay? And I really mean that. I feel sorry for you. 
But there are, men, there are sadly men who do not leave the home, and usually the woman is the one who takes initiative. So here's the simple answer to that. Don't be discouraged about that. The Bible shows there's nothing wrong with women taking initiative. Okay, so look at 2 Samuel chapter 20, okay? You notice throughout your whole Bible that when men fail to lead and to guide, or men made wrong decisions, the Lord used the women to take initiative and to help the man. Because they're supposed to be a supporter, a helper of men. See, that's the key. Here's an easy example. Sarah submitted to her husband by calling him Lord. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you women would go that far, right? <laughs> but Sarah, what did she do? She actually told Abraham, she took initiative and told Abraham about kicking out Ishmael's seed. Yeah. And what did God say? Listen to your wife. See, so there's nothing wrong with taking initiative. That's actually wisdom on Sarah's part. Actually, this city would have been shot to hell if this woman didn't take initiative. So go to 2 Samuel 20. 2 Samuel 20. Uh, verse 16. Then cried a wise woman out of the city. Hear, hear, say, I pray you unto Joab. Come near hither that I may speak with thee. Uh, look at verse 18. Then she spake, saying, They were wont to speak in old times, saying, They shall surely ask counsel at Abel. And so they ended the matter. I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel? Why wilt thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? So then, uh, verse 20, 21, Joab said, Okay, I won't destroy the city if you do such and such. So what did the woman do at verse 22? Then the women went woman went unto all the people. See, everyone in her town in her what? Wisdom. If it wasn't for her wisdom, her whole city would have been shot by Joab. See, there's nothing wrong with the woman taking initiative. Why? Because your husband or a man will fail in something. So your role, women, is to be a supporter and helper. See that? So there's nothing wrong with taking initiative. Crying out loud, if your man can't take care of your family, you got no choice. You got to take initiative to save your household. That's the idea. That's the idea. Unless your husband leads something that contradicts uh, the word of God, that's when you disobey him. We ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. Other than that, you have to obey and submit unto him as much as you can. As much as you can. Everything as long as it doesn't violate the will of God. Amen. The word of God. Amen. So... Women, we need women to take initiative. You know, here's, this is something I want to ask you. Why don't we see women take initiative? If all of you are whining about, ah, oh, there's nothing that I can take initiative on, why aren't you the first ones in soul winning? Why aren't you the first ones for street preaching? Why aren't you the first ones to rally up people to come to church or to start off a meeting or to support the pastor? Why is it mostly males? Now, you know why I'm saying that? Because I see that in majority of Bible-believing churches. That's sad. That's sad. So don't blame the men about women not having a role. No, women have a special role. It's just that you're not being the one taking initiative. Okay, let me show you more verses. So be wise. How do you be wise? You take initiative. You teach children. Clean testimony. Teach other women. Uh, learn. You learn. I mentioned about that. You learn. And the bonus is not just from church, but also from your husband. So you get double learning. Do you know how rich that learning is? You can get rich learning from both people. So that's why it's important for the man of the house to be a leader, so that your woman can be able to learn something important from you. You get a double bonus. For me, I am so blessed because as a child, before I became a pastor, I learned from my mom, I learned from my dad, and I learned from the church and many different pastors and teachers. Not just one husband and one pastor. So more teachers, the better. More teachers, the better. Okay, let's look at Proverbs. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. This is the famous chapter about the virtuous woman. The virtuous woman. 
So Proverbs chapter 31. And how do you develop wisdom? Is being the Proverbs 31 wife. That's how you become wise. Now, women should memorize, I mean like literally study and memorize this chapter. That's the most important chapter ever for women is Proverbs 31. Please meditate and read that. That will show you everything on how to be a proper woman that glorifies God. So if you start off at verse 10, look at this, a virtuous woman. See, she is non-worldly. She, her efforts make her husband and family known. Usually it's the husband that makes the wife and the children known. But what about a wife that makes her husband known, her children known? How about we have some of that, huh? She, she works hard. She takes care of her children. Uh, she takes care of her household. You'll notice also that, uh, let's see over here, verse 26, all of the virtuous woman, all these points of Proverbs 31, from verse 10 all the way to 31, from verse 10 to all the way to 31, you cannot be the Proverbs 31 wife without this. Verse 26, she openeth her mouth with what? Wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. So see, wisdom is associated with what? Proverbs 31. If you want to be a smart woman, intelligent woman, you be Proverbs 31. How many women are not going by the Proverbs 31 wife? It's really sad. Do you know how many women are going by the Genesis 3 woman? The Genesis 3 wife? Everyone's going by the Genesis 3 wife over here. They're not going by the Proverbs 31 wife. Okay, uh, lastly, let's look at Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. And then Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4. And then we'll clear off for the night. Thank you very much. I hope that you learned a lot tonight. Proverbs 11. And then we're also going to look at Philippians chapter 4. Now, do you know how you develop wisdom, women? And I guarantee this, because this is not just women, this is for men too. If you want to develop a lot of wisdom, and this will change your life forever, it's soul winning. Please do soul winning. Even in my basic discipleship class, one of the first things that I teach to develop knowledge is soul winning. It is extremely, extremely important. You know why? It teaches you how human nature is like. So you learn how to talk with different levels with people, like, how much more I can say, how much more should I be friendly, how much more should I be strong, how much more should I be resistant. It helps you with people interactions. So winning also helps you where you talk about any topic or subject that a person might bring up to you. So then you're prepared, you know how to be able to answer the questions that any soul might bring to you. And most important of all, when you win somebody to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's something that contributes to your reward in heaven. So, so when you improve more and more in soul winning, you improve more and more in wisdom. And that is absolute matter of fact statement. And some of you who have done soul winning know what I'm talking about. You've experienced that. Philippians, we're going to look at chapter 4, verse 3. And I treat thee also, true yoke for fellow, help those women which labored with me in the what? Gospel, with Clement also and with other my fellow labors. So notice right here, there are women who did soul winning with Paul. Do you develop wisdom when you do soul winning? Yes, look at Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is what? Wise. Yes, women, you become smarter when you do soul winning. What are you looking after? You're not doing any of these, are you? What are you looking after, huh? Position, job, school, rank, fame, power, possession, money. Isn't this all from Satan? Where are you turning your wisdom towards, huh? Don't eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Proverbs 11 says, a tree of life. Come on, women. Let's see some smart women. Amen? Amen.
Let's see some smart women rise up, take the initiative.